If your soil is quiet, compacted, and eerily still, no signs of life, no tunnels, no castings, chances are something subtle is wrong. You may have added mulch, compost, and even watered regularly, expecting worms to return and bring the garden back to life, but nothing happened. Instead of a thriving underground ecosystem, the soil stayed lifeless. What many gardeners don't realize is that a single, well-meaning mistake can make all the difference. It isn't always visible, it isn't always obvious. But if you've been using the wrong kind of mulch, specifically fresh fir bark, heavily treated wood chips, or over-chlorinated lawn clippings, you might be unknowingly creating conditions that drive earthworms away. Today we'll explore what this mistake actually looks like, why it matters so much, and how to reverse it fast. We'll also unpack the science behind what attracts earthworms and the kind of mulch that invites them in droves. When gardeners think about mulch, the focus is often on weed suppression or water retention. But for soil life, mulch is more than just a cover. It's actually a source of food and shelter. And you know, not all mulch is created equal. Fresh fir bark is one of the most common culprits. While it looks tidy and breaks down slowly, it also brings with it a host of problems for worms. Fir bark is naturally acidic and contains tannins, those plant-derived compounds that can really deter soil life. For earthworms, an acidic environment is more than just uncomfortable. It's deadly. Their skin, which they use to breathe, dries out quickly in acidic or resin-laced conditions, and well, their activity just grinds to a halt. Overchlorinated mulch is another silent killer. If you're using grass clippings from a lawn that's been treated with chlorinated tap water or chemical fertilizers, it might seem like organic mulch, but to a worm, it's toxic. Chlorine and ammonium-based compounds in these clippings can sterilize microbial life and send worms retreating deeper or away completely. These materials, although organic on the surface, Disrupt the natural chemistry of your soil, making it less hospitable to earthworm populations. Earthworms actually follow the scent of food. They don't rely on visuals at all. Instead, they sense microbial activity and the chemical breakdown of decaying matter. This is why aged organic material like compost, rotted leaves, or worm-friendly manures act like magnets. Aged organic matter provides two key things, food and comfort. It's already gone through some decomposition which means it's chemically stable, neutral in pH, and packed with bacteria and fungi, the preferred diet of many worm species. Unlike raw bark or fresh grass, it doesn't leach harmful acids or pull nitrogen from the soil. It simply sits there, softening the surface, feeding microbes, and keeping moisture levels ideal. Once this happens, worms move in rapidly. Studies have shown that soils amended with mature compost or rotted leaf mulch see a spike in earthworm biomass within weeks, not months. The key isn't to add more material, it's to add the right material. If you suspect your mulch is pushing earthworms away, the first step is to pull back what you've added and examine it. Fresh bark that smells acidic or resinous should be removed immediately, and, you know, overly green, wet, or matted grass clippings should be composted before applying again. If your mulch has white mold or feels slimy, that's another red flag. It means microbial life is unbalanced, which will keep worms at bay. Once you've cleared the offending layer, just focus on layering in composted materials. Shredded leaves, aged manure, or composted kitchen waste make excellent choices. Spread these in a thin, even layer over your soil and gently water them in. You're not burying anything, just feeding the surface and, you know, creating a gentle microbial bloom. In just a few weeks, you'll start noticing signs of life again. Little tunnels, soft, moist castings, and eventually, actual worms surfacing after rain. That's when you'll know you've repaired the damage. 
Besides mulch composition, there are a few more things that can throw your soil life out of balance. Overtilling breaks up worm tunnels and leaves their castings exposed to ultraviolet light and predators. Compacted soils from walking or heavy equipment also make it nearly impossible for worms to move freely. And synthetic herbicides or insecticides? They're a disaster for everything below the surface, killing microbes that worms rely on for food. Even overwatering with chlorinated tap water can be a slow, cumulative issue. Chlorine is antimicrobial. While a little here and there might be tolerable, frequent watering with chemically treated water strips the soil of beneficial bacteria, leaving worms with nothing to eat. The solution is simple. Let the soil breathe keep it moist but not soggy, avoid disturbing it unnecessarily and feed it with clean, aged and natural materials. Do that and worms will come. A thriving worm population is more than just a sign of healthy soil. It's the engine of fertility. Earthworms aerate the soil, increase water retention and distribute organic matter more effectively than any tool or tiller could. Their castings are packed with bioavailable nutrients and beneficial microbes. Their tunnels allow oxygen to reach deeper layers. And their presence alone is often enough to boost plant health, reduce disease, and speed up growth. So, when you lose worms, you don't just lose a creature, you lose the entire underground system they support. And, you know, when you get them back, everything starts working again. That one mistake, spreading acidic or chemically treated mulch, is easy to make, but honestly, it's even easier to correct. If your beds are, you know, quiet and wormless, check what's sitting on top. If it's not something you'd feel good composting with your bare hands, chances are, worms won't touch it either. Swap out the harmful materials, feed your soil life gently and consistently. Protect your soil from disturbance and let nature repair itself from the bottom up. If this guide helped you understand how to bring worms back into your garden, hit that subscribe button on Hydrohaven, leave a like, and share this with someone who's trying to grow more but seeing less. Healthy soil is built slowly, but it starts with one simple change. Let the worms come home.